30 years ago, on the 18th of December 1992, the international community lay in place essential standards to protect minorities. It was when UN member states came together and adopted by consensus the Declaration on the Rights of Persons Belonging to National or Ethnic Religions as Linguistic Minorities. It was a landmark moment, promoting equality, protecting communities, providing a voice, preventing conflict. The Declaration aimed to achieve all of that and to provide countries with concrete guidance on how to protect and promote minorities' human rights. 30 years later, we're asking how far we have come. Sadly, the setbacks are startling. Today, minority communities still endure various forms of discrimination. They are subject to hostility, forced assimilation, persecution, and violence. Minorities often still lack equal access to the fundamental human rights of healthcare and decent, non-hazardous employment. As the world re reels with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, we know that the virus has disproportionately affected minorities. Inter-ethnic tensions continue to surface. Minorities are being stripped of their political and citizenship rights across the world. Hate, prejudice, and incitement to violence against minorities on social media is widespread and occurs with relative impunity. And the combined ravages of poverty and climate change are moving minorities deeper into inequality, marginalization, and oppression. Minorities remain systematically excluded from participating in decision-making around issues that directly affect them. And it is precisely this exclusion that can create fertile ground for violence and conflict. It exacerbates stigma, prejudice, and stereotypes. Minorities' voices matter. Participation benefits not only minority communities, but all of society. Participation helps build peace and stability. Only when we involve all voices can we ensure equality and the human rights of all individuals, no matter who they are or where they come from. Minority rights are not simply statements of intent. They are an obligation. This anniversary serves as a stark reminder that governments can and need to do more. They must address common root causes of conflicts and deal with grievances before political forces instrumentalize them. They must recognize that inclusion is a key ingredient to a stable, cohesive, and more vibrant society. Now it is the time to come together to take stock of setbacks and achievements, to understand how to best move towards a future where minority rights are a priority, where a life in dignity and equality is accessible and can be enjoyed by all. My office remains dedicated to implementing the principles of the Declaration. We're increasing accountability for minority rights violations. We're monitoring and responding to crises affecting minorities and contributing to legislative and policy reforms. We're providing training in minority rights advocacy. Under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, countries have committed to leaving no one behind. As we move towards a post-pandemic future, with a new social contract, equality and justice must be positioned at the heart of our action for the people whose rights we strive to protect, regardless of their nationality, ethnicity, religion, or language. We cannot stand by and witness discrimination and injustice directed to minorities by simple virtue of who they are. As we mark the 30th anniversary of the Declaration, let us redouble our efforts so that full realization of the human rights of minorities becomes a reality. The Minorities Declaration is short, but its call to equality is powerful. We're hopeful that more people are starting to listen. Let us unite around the vision of inclusion and dignity anchored in social, economic, political, and environmental justice to shape an equal world for us, for us all, and for all generations to come.